Hey YouTube, it's the most electrifying woman in travel, Katie from the K Show blog here, and today we're talking all about the best things to do in Bonaire, aka how to spend your vacation time. Now I've narrowed this down to my top 10, but I will say it was hard to pick just 10 because there's a lot to do on the island. So what I would recommend is check out the link in the description that will take you to my website. I have a full detailed blog post with all these and more and all the information you would need to help plan your itinerary. So that's like your cheat sheet. For now, we'll just take a little video tour of Bonaire and I'll share my favorite things. So let's go. Number one, go snorkeling. Bonaire is a snorkeler's paradise. So the water around the entire island of Bonaire is a protected nature park, which means you can enter the water from just about any beach. And in a matter of seconds, you'll be swimming over a crazy cool reef amongst all sorts of wildlife. It is wonderful if you love snorkeling because you don't have to take a boat tour every day, or you don't have to swim all the way out into the, the deep just to be able to go snorkeling. It's epic. You do need a permit to enter the water and there are a couple of rules to follow. So just check out my planning video or blog post on that and I've got all the details there that you would need. I also have a written snorkeling guide on my website so I definitely recommend checking that out because it has the list of all my favorite spots, what I love about them, the parking info, the GPS coordinates, everything you would need to plan your snorkeling adventures. Number two, visit the donkey sanctuary. Now there are donkeys all over the island, so it's likely that you'll see them just while you're out and about, but I still recommend visiting the donkey sanctuary because it's just a lot of fun. You get to get up close with them, learn about their history and what this organization is doing to protect them, and you can support a cool local business. This one's a self-driving tour, so you'll enter and you'll drive around the park and you'll just be met with roaming donkeys all along the way. When you get your ticket, you can also get a bucket of food. So as you're driving around, you can feed them or feed them from the bucket. Uh, they know the bucket means food, so they're going to come up to you. It's not hard to spot the donkeys in any way. After that, you can go into the special care section where you can get up close with the donkeys that aren't ready to go out into the park yet. And you might even see some cute little babies here because that's where the babies get started. I saw one that was like two days old and he was so cute. Number three, Kadushi Distillery. Have you ever thought about drinking a cactus? Well, now you can do just that. I recommend visiting the Kadushi Distillery to get a demonstration of how they make the iconic, famous cactus liquor right there in Bonaire, as well as all the other spirits they make. There's a nice outdoor seating area so you can get a fresh cocktail there and just chill out. There's some cute cats. You can try samples of all their products and of course buy some to take home with you because it makes a great souvenir. And if you're a carry-on traveler, they have travel size. One cool thing I learned was it's not just a cactus liqueur. They actually have one liqueur to celebrate each of the Dutch Caribbean islands. These are my two favorites. So that's cactus, that's the Bonaire one, and this is Curacao. And they both tasted amazing, but I mean, I think all of them tasted great, but those were my favorites. Number four, take a cave tour. I didn't actually do this one, but I wanted to add it in because it's one of the most popular things to do in Bonaire and probably what I would do if I was returning. So during these tours, you'll be taken out to explore different caves on the island. And depending on the tour you take, you can even go snorkeling in an underground cave which just sounds cool, doesn't it? So I definitely recommend checking that out if you're planning a visit. Number five, have a beach barbecue. Experience a beach day like a local by having a beach barbecue at sunset. But hold on, you don't have to have one of those big grills and lug around big equipment everywhere. Go to the Van and Twill supermarket, pick up one of their disposable barbecues. The only other thing you'll need to get is a lighter and it comes with everything else you would need. They also sell these bite-sized meat trays, which are perfect for this. So grab all that there, take it to the beach and enjoy a beautiful barbecue. You probably wanna have some spare water to cool off the coals after you're done and maybe a bag or a box or some way to transport it to the trash. But it's a really cool experience. It was actually one of my favorites of the trip and it was just so cool to just sit there, watch the sunset, have a drink, eat some food and just Relax, it was very relaxing. Number six, eat iguana. I know you're listening to this list and you're like, well, these things sound cool, but I'm going there to eat a lizard. Well, let's make that happen too. So when you're there, head over to, in brackets, let's hope I pronounce this right, end bracket, Posada Padamira, and you can get an iguana soup or a stew there. Now the iguana, it's not necessarily anything I would get again, but I'm really glad I tried it, it was fun. And I definitely would recommend trying it because that's what travel's all about, right? Is trying all these new things. It just, for me, was like a million tiny little lizard bones and seemed like more work for the amount of meat that you're getting. And then kind of every time I would see an iguana out and about after that, I was always like, ah, sorry bud, I think I ate your cousin. But it was really fun. 
The whole meal is actually great and they have other foods there if you don't want to eat the iguana. You can get beef, chicken, goat, they have lots of other food. It's a really great setting and it has great views as well. Number seven, see the salt pyramids. And Bonaire's main export is salt. And you'll be able to see one of the iconic views of Bonaire, which is the salt pyramids, as you're driving around. Don't worry, you cannot miss them because as the name suggests, they are giant white pyramids made of salt. They stand out. You'll also see the pink salt flats that surround them and they stretch for like as far as the eye can see pretty much. And they just look amazingly beautiful and photogenic with the contrast of the white salt and the blue ocean. It's, it's just a really gorgeous sight. One of my favorites of the trip. This one is like a stop on the side of the road and take a photo kind of thing. Uh, but well worth seeing the salt pyramids and then buying some salt while you're there that was made in Bonaire. Number eight, visit the slave huts. Now another place to stop that's actually not too far from the salt pyramid, so as you drive in that direction, is the slave huts. It's not an exciting stop, it's a somber experience more than anything, but it's good to learn some of the history of Bonaire and that's also what travel's about, right? We don't just travel to see the good parts or the highlights, it's seeing everything, good and bad, and learning the history. These are just on the side of the road as well, so you really can't miss them, but you'll see the white slave huts, then you drive a little bit further down, you'll see the red ones. There is an information plaque there so you can read and learn a bit more about it. And these are just huts where the slaves who worked the salt pan slept. And they're just tiny. Like you get to see inside them and get perspective of the amount of room they had. And it's hard to even imagine that being considered enough room for one person. But at times they put six people in here, which is just crazy. But definitely well worth visiting and learning about that while you're on the island. Number nine. Oh, we're almost done already. Eat from a food truck. So after you've tried your lizard, you've had a couple of pina coladas, I recommend visiting one of the great food trucks on the island. These are great for like a quick lunch when you're out beach hopping around the island and adventuring. And you can stop, get a nice meal, you'll be right on the beach. It's just a nice casual experience. I absolutely loved the Kite City food truck where you can get an amazing tuna burger. Honestly, the only way you're going to get that tuna fresher is if you take yourself out, catch it yourself, and eat it immediately. It was fantastic. I would also recommend the Cactus Blue food truck, which had a really good lionfish burger, and they also had fresh juices that were served in recycled bottles, which I loved. So both of those I definitely recommend trying, but no matter where you go, just try a food truck while you're there, and make sure you have cash on you. Number 10, take a trip to Klein Bonaire. Now Klein Bonaire means little Bonaire and that's what it is. It's a smaller Bonaire. It's a small uninhabited island just off the coast of Bonaire and you can easily get there with a water taxi. And I have all the info for this in my blog post but I'd recommend doing the drift drop off. That's where they'll take you out, they'll drop you at the main area where you can leave your bags and whatever you have, then you get back on the boat, they take you up a little bit and then you just jump off the boat into the water and then you'll drift down with the current. You'll be going with the current. You can snorkel down over all the reef areas and you just go with the current back to the main area. It might sound a little crazy, but the it's not difficult snorkeling because you're going with the flow of the water. So it's really easy and relaxing and you get to see just a lot of the snorkeling areas. So I definitely recommend that. But even if you don't do that, if you just want to laze at the beach, it has a huge sandy beach area. So really great for just lazing on the beach, jumping in the water, going for a swim. It's beautiful, it's quiet, and it's great for a day trip. There is nothing on the island though, so you want to bring everything you need for your time there. So water, sunscreen, snacks, whatever you need, take it with you because there's nothing to get there. So I just want to finish off with some tips on planning your actual adventures. Firstly, you might want to operate sort of systematically by location if you're pressed for time. It'll just save you backtracking. And there's a road, I from memory think it's around the 1000 steps area. It's a snorkeling and diving site where it goes from a two-way road into a one-way one -way road. So if you're driving up in that direction and you went past it into the one-way and then you wanted to go back down and snorkel just a little, little further back, you'd have to like actually drive this whole way around just to get back to that spot. And if you don't have a lot of time on vacation, that's you know, maybe not ideal. In saying that, it is a small island. Really nowhere is a long drive, but if you do only have a couple of days there or you're just really short on time and you want to make the most of it, 
that's probably just unnecessary to waste it. So I'd go sort of systematic, you know, and go as you see things. So you save any sort of backtracking. Another tip is that the dress code is super casual. And this is one thing I loved about Bonaire because it fits me perfectly, but it makes it great for adventure planning because you can combine a lot of different types of adventures at the same day. And you don't have to worry about like going back to freshen up and neaten up or anything like that. So you could go snorkeling in the morning and then go to the distillery afterwards and it would be fine even if you just have flip-flops on and your hair's wet from the beach it's okay they're not expecting some fancy dress code or you don't have to like neaten yourself up so you can just be going around the island doing everything as you come across it so that's about it i hope this helps you plan your adventures and remember i have my website with full detailed guides i have other videos on bonaire with more tips so hopefully between all that you have everything you need to just have a great vacation it's beautiful and i hope you love it as much as i did and if you did like this video please don't forget to tell youtube you like the video because they have to know too so leave me a comment hit the thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't already and other than that, I will see you next time. Bye.